Good morning. My name is Francesco. And my name is Irena. And we are going to present the scientific art school Michele Goresi of Chitanova. I represent the students from Slovenia. We come from Velenia, the city of opportunities. Cyprus joined the European Union in 2004 with the whole of the island as EU territory. The people of Cyprus are warmly inspired by the EU's motto, United in Diversity, and look forward to a united Cyprus following the EU's achievement in the last 60 years. Um, with our participation to the Euroscola um, competition, we wanted to create our own ideas of the European policy and um, yeah, therefore we are really happy to be here with all of you guys and we hope to have a lot of fun today. Bonjour. Good day. My name is Sebastian Hofstedt and I'm here together with my class to represent Sweden in the European Parliament. This year we are finishing uh, Camina's project, which is called Declaration for a Better Europe, uh, European students on their way to European citizenship. Uh, this project we were doing with six European countries, and I would like also to say that we are happy to be here and we are proud to be a part of European Union. We keep dreaming of a new Europe, closer to its citizens, constructed on its universal values of solidarity, collectivity and mutual respect. We are dreaming of the day when each and every one of us in this room will have regained his lost unity and cooperation. Hello. So now, here I am, in the European Parliament, here to talk about the uh, wonderful Ashby area. And I must say, I would be very concerned if any of you knew where it was, or that it even existed before we came along. Ashby lives, uh, actually is actually in the middle of the UK, near to Nottingham, Leicester and Birmingham. At the end, I would like to express my gratitude for this opportunity, and I am proud to be a participant of today's meeting. I wish all of you present here a productive cooperation with hope that maybe we will meet in the future someday. Thank you. Uh, so one of the major problems in Croatia is that there is not enough employment opportunities and we, the youngs, are leaving the country trying to find a better future in the world. So, uh, I would like to ask you how to prevent this situation. How does EU plan to help? And I'd like to ask, why do you think that democracy is the best type of political system? In uh, light of recent events, many of us Europeans have come to observe neo-Nazism come to life. In my country, Greece, albeit a left government was just elected, the extremist party named Golden Dawn came third in the most recent elections. New uh, cases of ras racism, chauvinism, misogyny, homophobia, religious fundamentalism and uh, other forms of hatred have surfaced, affecting our daily life in many ways. How do these phenomena inhibit, endanger or violate the European vision and how should the European Union intervene in such matters? In all due fairness, I believe that they could not, cannot easily be resolved without external assistance. I would like to uh, ask about the sanctions. It actually hits the Poland because um, Polish producers cannot sell apples, for example, and it destroys Polish industry, this whole uh, climate pact. And um, why we keep being in European, which actually harms our country? I am Ismaili, I am from Greece, and my question has to do about our, our com economy. Um, the truth is that we do want to pay our loaning, but we do not want to do this in a way that exhausts our people. So, um, the, new government that, the new government that we have right now has a plan, and all it needs is a chance to make this plan happen. Why is it hard to give this chance to the government? Why is it hard? As I mentioned in my speech, Cyprus is a divided country and I'm wondering why can only south side of Cyprus, Cyprus can benefit from EU and north, Cyprus, north side of it can't. All the north Cyprus is included as a land, uh, included EU as a land. And how can this problem be solved? Because our capital Nicosia is the only divided capital in the world. In EU there are some countries which uh, doesn't, uh, don't have a uh, euro. And if there's going to be some situation in the future, uh, which uh, is going to have to uh, tell them that they have to accept the euro 
And what's going to happen if the countries say that they don't want the euro? There's going to be some tax. When it comes to the environment, the situation is not so good. We all know that the rate of pollution has raised in the last years. In your opinion, which are the best measures to be taken into consideration? Thank you. Until changes have been made regarding the, the Dublin Convention, does the EU have any, like, can it help countries like Malta and Italy that are being overwhelmed with refugees and they don't have the resources to, to like, contain them in a proper way and it's unhumanitary? Can the EU help with any sort of economical or anything? What is the European Union doing to combat poverty and inequality within its borders, especially now in light of the economic crisis? And what is going to be done in the future to ameliorate the situation? Um, you were talking about a solution that would include um, distributing the immigrants um, over um, all the member states of the European Union. And I was wondering what is uh, prevent preventing these immigrants from um, moving, traveling to uh, the richer countries in the, in the Euro European Union? You've said, when you talk about immigration, you said that the immigrants are going to be shared out amongst the European countries, but I'd like to know how you would organize that. Would it be based on statistics? For example, would you be looking to see uh, how many inhabitants we had in a country? How would you ensure that there is a proper balance uh, struck? Because, of course, if people come on boats from Libya and Syria, of course, if they are accepted in a country, it's going to encourage others to come to try uh, to get across the, 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 the those dangerous waters in, in similar boats. As we know, cyberbullying is a major problem that affects almost all of young people of this generation. 43% uh, of us have been cyberbullied. And, you know, Irish people have been significantly affected by this. And my question for you is, do you think there will ever be a law enforced at European level for prosecuting offenders of cyberbullying and catfishing? And if so, what would be the punishment? Gervmila, thank you. Another idea was um, uh, advertisement to provide information on different ways on how to use uh, green energy, such as uh, biogas or solar energy or wind energy. Um, and that's also a way um, to teach the public um, of the consequences um, that will follow if we don't do something about uh, the, the problem of global warming. The idea is um, to advertise through social media in order to reach the youth um, or, to, or through uh, newspapers and television to reach um, all the rest of the generation so that we can um, reach uh, the public in, as a whole. Another idea is uh, to improve the ways of transportation using green energy, such um, as trains and buses which use uh, renewable energy, uh, because right now uh, a lot of people um, still drive cars um, with non-renewable uh, energy um, uh, that cause pollution. So the idea is to make uh, electric cars more available for the public by making them cheaper and to make sure there are as many charging stations as there are petrol stations uh, to make them more available. We hope these ideas will help to, to form a solution for uh, global warming and all the other pressing issues regarding the environment. Thank you very much. My question is how can we ensure that these uh, solutions to the environment are implemented in the right way in countries in the European Union without the uh, right economical capabilities. Thank you. Well, of course, uh, in order to implement these uh, ideas um, into society, um, there is going to be um, a raise of taxes, which um, there, also, uh, there always is. Um, we have new ideas that cost a lot of money because um, that is um, the situation with uh, renewable energy. Because uh, right now, there aren't a lot of uh, resources. In order to uh, provide them, we need uh, a lot of we need money. Um, also, as I said, um, uh, the increase on uh, the, there was this idea to increase taxes on products that use non-renewable energy, but um, we as a we as a committee specifically um, had the idea to um, wait with that until the, f uh, the future because right now uh, people still rely um, on those products. So um, I think. Uh, in that way, it won't be harmful to the economy because it's not like um, we're going to stop using non-renewable energy entirely. Um, just, um, we just want to reduce it.
Are we certain that third world countries need our money, our teachers, doctors, or any kind of aid? In many ways, can we, uh, we can help um, uh, those countries uh, to develop. First of all, we have to achieve public awareness. We have to let our own, our Europeans know there are countries out there that suffer and need our help. We have to set certain developmental goals. And uh, first of all, we have to use our um, allocated money as a fuel for their growth uh, so as to achieve the restabilization of their inner, inner infrastructure. By subsidizing money, it is important for us to tone the local economy to aim for an increase in productivity. We have to tone the economy so as to let the suffering people get back on, the, on their feet. In an effort, it is also crucial that we provide humanitarian aid. We have to help those people combat the problems of today, resolve poverty, epidemics, and other great problems of uh, the modern world. We have to provide the third countries with knowledge, new prospects of rebuilding themselves. We should not solely focus on keeping the countries in need alive. It is more essential for us to keep, help them to regain their independence. Uh, another thing is, uh, it might sound strange, that, but uh, we want to ease immigration. Uh, if uh, a human is, does not have any uh, criminal background, if, if he has a degree, if he's capable of doing work, then why not? Uh, why not uh, uh, let specialists from other world countries come to Europe? And our thing is uh, political education in schools. Uh, we think that it's, it shouldn't be valued because uh, we think that youth should be introduced with politics uh, because it's a part of knowing uh, who's making the decisions, how they're being made in the government. Uh, then we want cooperation between EU member states in trading, create a self-efficient economy between the European Union member states, compete in the world market as a union, as a whole. Uh, all in all, the, tra uh, the trade should be increased between the EU countries, and uh, there should be more strict rules about trading with uh, countries outside the European Union. Then another thing is the environment. We would like to encourage environment protecting treaties and try to protect it ourselves. Prioritize uh, talking about jobs, uh, prioritize the creation of working places, more policies for the disabled, because uh, no matter how you, who you are, you're still a person, and European Union puts every human right in front of it, and we should keep it the same way. And the last thing is more social guarantees for the working class, uh, because, as I said before, every human is a human, no matter what he works, he should have the policies, he should be assured of his life and his work. Thank you. I, I totally agree with your ideas, but let me just say to call a spade a spade their ideas. Let's face the reality. We have the problem not with the ideas, we have the ideas. We don't know uh, and we can't, we have problems with the implement of those ideas. And that's the problem here. That's why we have so many questions of how to do that. We know what to do, I believe, because it has to do with humanity and the human rights. I'd like to expand on the points previously made by my chairperson. For the issue of critical thinking, we'd like to propose the implementation of a mandatory program whereby students will be obligated to participate in at least one active citizenship activity, such as Euroscholar, through their high school education. This is aimed to promote the development of independent critical thinking which enables the proper judgment of media sources and earlier awareness. Additionally, our group spoke extensively about the gaps within the EU and how news may lead to the nations disliking each other for one reason or another. As earlier you probably noted, there was a comment made about the, um, the behavior gap between Germany and Greece that's emerged from the economic recession. And finally, to separate opinion from fact, we propose the creation of an EU website dedicated to publish the reliability of media sources, which will be determined through fact checkers. This will allow the public to ensure the information they are receiving is not misconstrued or altered in any way to shape their opinion. To conclude, critical thinking must be achieved independently. Through these measures, we hope that public opinion will no longer form around stereotypes and that media will present a broader, unbiased perspective. Thank you for your attention.
this website, who should make it? The government, a company, or what? And how can we be sure that the person or the persons behind the website don't use it to, for the personal interest and use it for pro pro propaganda and things like that? This will be achieved through the EU, of course, but over a large body. It won't be specific or country-specific, opinion-specific. It will be voted on and cross-checked, not by these fact-checkers. They won't, it won't be assigned per person, per, web, per um, link or web page. It will be multiple to ensure that there's no corruption and that no matter your nationality or what opinion you are trying to portray, it will be correct. First of all, we emphasize the need to combat language barriers. And we thought of creating separate classes for students and adults to teach them the language of the host country that they've moved to. And that teachers in public schools should volunteer to teach these lessons to the migrants, um, also teaching them the language and the history to give them a sense of culture of the place that they've arrived in. Helping to give refugees the means to be heard and have a voice in the, in the society that they've moved to will help them integrate and um, become more um, into part of the culture that they've moved into. Second of all, we thought of incentivizing firms to make it so that companies have to fill quotas, um, a sort of affirmative action, if you will. And a certain proportion of the workforce of some companies must come from the minority or a refugee sector to make it so that immigrants and migrants have employment opportunities so that they can be more self-sufficient in the future. Then we moved on to the educational facet of this problem. And we thought of initiating informative campaigns to raise public awareness and change public opinion about the topic. We want to combat the stereotypes and the racism and prejudice and xenophobia which plagues our modern day society. If I've understood this correctly, you've actually looked at the question of positive discrimination also in the debate, that we should have something like a quota for refugees, that we should actually be able to employ them. I'd like to know how you're supposed to be doing that. If we have a refugee as a candidate, and let's say a native or someone who's actually long, long time in the, camp, in the same country, let's say they're both applying for a job, would the refugee get the job just to fill the quota, or would the actual native get the job uh, because if you are going to be able to employ refugees without the qualifications I think that's going to lead to a position where people who live there are going to feel that they're at a disadvantage and that I don't think is going to promote integration thank you thank you for your point um, you were right we were suggesting positive discrimination however we weren't suggesting neglecting quality of work we weren't suggesting giving underqualified individuals the positions that qualified individuals deserve um, we're just suggesting that people shouldn't be discriminated against because they're from a different background and because they might not necessarily be locals. Um, we're not suggesting that the quota will be filled by um, making it so that individuals who live in the country don't get a chance for equal employment. However, we're suggesting that foreigners should be given the same chance. For example, if a doctor from Germany arrives in Cyprus, my country, they should be given an equal opportunity to find work and have enough patients as a doctor from Cyprus. And then again, the quality of the person's work, uh, their education will also play a role in their employment, not necessarily just the quotas that we're trying to establish through this piece of legislation. Thank you. When everybody in Europe um, can gain some presentation skills through special courses. Uh, very simple, like how to prepare a CV. This uh, will he help very much. Uh, it will teach young people how to present themselves and um, express what's very important about them and show their skills. The third one is the legal requirement for internships in companies. The EU, the EU must vote for legislation that will help um, companies, that will actually make companies, hire young people. And not only this, they uh, should give tax benefits to companies that um, employ at least 10% worth of young people. This, we think, will help uh, youth employment significantly. 
Uh, I'd like to make a comment uh, about your four point uh, because uh, forcing companies to employ youngsters is a uh, it may be a wrong thing because uh, young people are not the only one that needs need to be employed. And I think you should change that point a little bit. Thank you. Well, you're right about that. Young people are not the only ones who are seeking employment. But um, unemployment in young people is very high. I could tell you that around 5.5 million young people are unemployed in the EU alone, which means that one in five people under 25 who are living, to, who are willing to work, cannot find a job. Moreover, the unemployment rate among young people is over 20 percent, double the rate for all age groups combined, and nearly three times the rate for the over 25s. And Last but not least, 7.5 million people aged tw from 15 to 24 are currently neither in a job nor in education or training. Thank you.